Good evening, everybody. What's going on? Not a lot of people here yet. Hopefully it'll pick up soon. But those of you who are, I'm hopeful that you want to talk about the charters. Because, let's be honest, the blog has been a little bit too much about me lately and not nearly enough about the team. I want to talk about the team. I want to talk about <clears throat> Football Outsiders. I don't know how many of you read the Football Outsiders website, read the annual Football Outsiders Almanac. Um, I read it. I love it. I think they're great. Uh, I love the stats that they put up. And and in general, the week-to-week the -week stuff that they do on the site is, is great. Um, the Almanac itself, which I think is still their biggest moneymaker, it can be good, and sometimes it's not so good. And sometimes you get some not-so-great write-ups about certain teams. And I think the Chargers got a not-so-great write-up about their team this year. Um, I mean, it's interesting. It is. I just... I. The Chargers are, are not you know, the Giants, and they're not the San Francisco 49ers, and I think they're kind of the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to <clears throat> teams that a lot of, you know, football fans are interested in. Uh, one of the less popular teams, I guess. So, I think they get tossed around a lot, and they're, they they often get thrown to, like, the new guy at Football Outsiders, or, or get tossed to someone who doesn't really know the Chargers very well. Um... And and I, it, it their section always seems to be written by someone who doesn't like who watched their game film, kind of, but didn't really wasn't paying attention during the season if that makes any sense, um, and and a lot of times it just sucks the wind, right out of any excitement that I have leading up to the season, uh, with this year not really being an exception to that except they really like uh, whoever wrote it. Um, Andy Benoit wrote it, uh, really seems to like Mike McCoy's offense, that's cool, but doesn't think the offensive line got any better, doesn't think the running game got any better, um, doesn't think the secondary is very good, thinks Derek Cox isn't very good, uh, it's, it's an interesting write-up, and I, I definitely recommend everyone get the almanac if, if you can, um, read the charger section, and then uh, what I do typically for at least the first half of the year is I go and I read everyone else in the division, and then like the, le the week leading up to a Chargers game, I read whatever the opponent's write-up is, because it's, it's a really good breakdown of what the team did last year and why, what they did in the offseason, what they're expected to do this year. Um... But, I don't know, I, I think what, what got under my skin is, is that Andy said the one thing that, that you don't really want to say to a Chargers fan right now, which is he thinks that Tom Telesco and Mike McCoy are very similar to A.J. Smith and Norv Turner. It's nothing, obviously we got rid of those guys for a reason, we don't want to hear that the new guys are like them. So, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and there's there's a lot of stuff in there that I'd like to respond to, but Andy's actually going to be doing a live Q and A open thread style thing on Bolts in the Blue probably in the next week, <clears throat> and I'll have a chance to ask him a bunch of questions about it. Uh, but reading that and and this last week and realizing that football is nine days away from you know the start of training camp. Uh, it's getting me excited. It's getting me back in the mode for football. Um, now I'm just counting down the days until I can go to a practice and then counting down the days until there's an actual game. And then, you know, I I worry about everything, so I usually spend the preseason sitting around waiting for the major injuries. Who are they going to be? Where are they going to be? When are they coming? And then it'll be, you know, waiting for week one, waiting for cuts, things like that. Um... If you guys have any questions you want me to get into, obviously put them in the comments. Uh, when I'm not in the middle of a rant, I'll be checking those out. 
Yes, the Land of Real Beers fan post was pretty much the greatest thing ever. Um, I even voted that I should wear and eat a hat. I'm thinking a nacho hat, because that was sort of one of the original ideas, was a, a nacho hat with, like, cheese or salsa in the middle. I don't know where I could find one of those, but they have to exist, right? If they do, I will... My favorite color is not a team question, but my favorite color is red. Um, I agree with you guys. Football Outsiders is... People sort of treat it like a football bible now. Which is weird. I think people are starting to do the same thing with Pro Football Focus. Not realizing that both of them are just... They're the same as every other stat. I mean, they're just stats. They're better stats, but they're just stats. You can't tell everything about a football player by his stats. So, you can tell a lot, but you can't tell everything. I Look, I could eat the rest of the cake hat right now, but what's the point? The Land of Real Beer said that unless I wear it for an hour, which I can't anymore because I already ate two-thirds of the thing, he said, which apparently I did for no reason, he said, unless I wear it for an hour as a hat, it doesn't count. What's the point of eating a hat right now? You guys want me to eat a fake hat, and then you're going to tell me it doesn't count, and then I have to eat another hat? It's bullshit. That is a great picture of a guy putting his own hat, though. <sighs> Yeah, you can say our major injury already happened, but you never know. I thought our major injury happened last year with uh, Ryan Matthews, and then Vincent Brown went down. You never know. Oh, I'm not clicking that link right now, but I hope that's for a, like, nacho hat. I see you can say that putting the last third on my head counts, although I'm not sure I could balance it on my head. I don't think everyone would agree with you, which is the problem. We need, like, the whole voting committee to be here right now for me to do this, and I don't think they're here. That is a ridiculous gif of a pony eating a hat. This is already spinning way out of control. Okay, let's open it up. I want to ask a question. I want to ask if everyone is okay with Manti Teo starting the year as a starter. Oh, sorry for the yawning. My sleep schedule is all screwed up. Um, Manti Teo, starting linebacker. Why does nobody seem bothered by that? And I'll add an addendum, since you guys like answering two questions at once, and I like asking two questions at once. If you're okay with Manti Teo starting, why are you not okay with Jonas Mouton starting? Or are you okay with either one of them starting? Or are you okay with neither one of them starting? That's what I want to know. Put your answer in the questions, because I feel like this is a good conversation that not anybody is really having, but I think there's a wide array of opinions out there. I could be wrong. Everyone could just be... I love Manti Teo, and Jonas Mouton sucks, because whatever. No, don't call on Donald. Donald does nothing but make me angry lately. He does not need to be here. No answers to the Manti Teo thing? You guys are either slow typers, or you just don't care. There's also not a lot of you tonight. Sucks. I have to start doing this weekly again. I think the last one of these I did, we had 70 or 80 people watching at once, and right now we got about 20. So, this is going to become a regular thing again. We'll start small, we'll build ourselves back up. By the time football season rolls around, pretty sure we'll have a couple hundred people in here watching this, and then... It'll be bonkers, and it'll just been out of control, and part of me wants to do 
Richard told me I'm supposed to call these vlogs. So part of me wants to do post-game vlogs, like game ends, boom, flip on the camera and go. I think that might be dangerous, but I kind of want to do it. I kind of want to sit here and cry into my beer with you guys. Or, you know, celebrate. Fuck the Raiders. Fuck the Broncos. Yeah, Peyton Manning broke his neck. Like, whatever. Um, I think that could be fun. We're going to have to try that at least once and see how it goes. Okay. Bring him out in obvious passing situations like 3rd and 10. But outside of that, you're good. Mouton has shown nothing. Teo has shown nothing. Like, I understand Mouton wasn't, you know, a potential Heisman finalist, but Heisman Trophy doesn't mean shit to me, considering Charlie Ward won one. Like, Heisman doesn't really mean much to me. Um, Mark Ingram won one. And, I don't know, Jonas Mouton is, is built similarly. They're both just as fast as each other. Like... We haven't seen anything from Mouton because he's been on the bench. But we haven't seen anything from Teo except for what he did in college. So he's essentially the same as Mouton right now. I don't know that you can say Mouton has shown nothing as, as, as your reason. He's supposed to have a great head for the game. And that's the tough bit for rookies. There's a lot of guys that have a great head for the game that just aren't physically good enough. Teo, as a second round, should start as the other inside linebacker with our weak inside linebacker group. I think Jonas Mouton was picked in the second round. I'm looking that up right now. All of my computer's kind of slow. But I I'm pretty sure Jonas Mouton was picked in the second round as well. So... Like, I know one of them was traded up for, but second round, 61st overall. So they're both second rounders. Neither one of them has done anything at the pro level. And yet, for some reason, everyone's completely comfortable with Manti Teo starting, and no one is at all comfortable with Jonas Mouton starting. I don't understand that at all. Mouton has had the opportunity and failed with it. When was he given the opportunity? He went from... Being behind Takeo Spikes to now, for some reason, being behind Manti Teo. Like, I, I don't understand where Mouton failed that we can see. The only thing you can say is he hasn't been good in practice, and we can't actually prove that because none of us are watching practice. For all we know, Mouton doesn't get on the field because he has a problem with John Pagano or... You know, he doesn't get on the field because he, I don't know, they think he's dumb or something. I don't, it doesn't matter. You can't say, you can't criticize Mouton's game when you haven't seen any of it. The only game we've seen from Mouton is the same game we've seen from Teo, which is college. Mouton isn't well-rounded enough. I want to see him do okay in coverage before he starts. Manti Teo is probably not good in coverage either. I don't understand. Oh, you're saying Manti Teo was good at coverage in college. He was okay at zone. I think Jonas Mouton could be okay at zone too. Oh, I'm like 30 seconds before you guys. That actually makes a lot of sense. Not that I have any sort of dump button. Not that I would use any sort of dump button. But that makes sense in terms of when I actually see you guys. I know vlog is an awful word. I haven't been wanting to use it, but Richard told me I should. I Look, if I promised to eat a hat, I probably wouldn't get any more viewers than I would if I didn't. I do not... Wait, I do drive a blue car. I was not in Little Italy today at all, actually. I didn't even come close to it. No, Mouton hasn't shown something, but neither has Teo. That's my point. Like, right now, they should be dead even. But everyone likes Teo because he's the shiny new toy. And because of the Heisman Trophy thing.
Teo has been way more productive. Oh. Come on now. Teo is on a defense surrounded by all Americans playing weak ass teams. Mouton was on a defense surrounded by nobody in the Big Ten. Like, there's a difference. There's a huge difference. I know Mel Kuyper originally said he saw him as a Mouton as a fifth round draft pick, but that was as a 4 3 linebacker because that's what he played in college. When he got picked, with, I think the same thing could be said for Manti Teo. When he got picked by the Chargers, Kuyper, Kuyper came out and said, I hadn't thought about Mouton in the 3 4. He's actually a really good fit for it, and he could justify the second round pick. This is what I'm saying. Like You guys have talked yourselves into Manti Teo so much and talked yourselves out of Jonas Mouton that for some reason you think one of them is great and one of them sucks, and we have no definitive proof that either one of them is good or bad or any better or worse than the other one. Doesn't, am I the only one who sees this? Um, no, I was not in Little Italy today. I was in Little Italy this weekend, driving through. You don't see players defending Mouton. You don't see players defending Manti Teo. Like, every argument you have against Mouton is an argument that could be made against Manti Teo. Every argument you have for Manti Teo, besides the Heisman thing, which means nothing, can be made for Jonas Mouton. Like, I don't understand what the difference is right now. After I see them practice, after I see them in the preseason, I will understand if there is a difference. But right now, I don't understand why everyone thinks there's such a large difference between the two of them. We have no definitive proof except for the fact that Jonas Mouton couldn't beat out to KO Spikes. Okay, Gordy's tired of this subject. That's fine. Hey, we're up for a couple, a couple viewers. Hold on, important text message I have to check. Okay, let's talk about Ryan Matthews. This is actually the thing that bothered me about the Football Outsiders right up on the Chargers the most. So, they were talking about the running game. And Football Outsiders is, and I'm, I'm, I'm with them on this, they are big believers that the success of the running game has very little to do with the running back itself that running backs are essentially interchangeable as long as they fit within certain parameters. You know, they have to be certain size, certain strength, certain speed. And if they fit within those parameters, which a billion people do, and they generally have decent vision, then it all depends on the offensive line. You have a good offensive line, you have good numbers. You've got a bad offensive line, you have bad numbers. The running back cannot change any of that. So... They pointed that out as a way to say Ryan Matthews' lack of success, the running game's lack of success the last few years is on the offensive line. Fine. Then they said that the Chargers ranked near last, I think it was 30th in the league, in rushing yards at or after the second level. So basically past the line of scrimmage. Once you get through that original pile, once you get through the linebackers, you're faced with safeties, corners, and guys trying to catch you from behind. How good are you? That is based on a number of different things. Downfield blocking by your offensive linemen. Downfield blocking by your wide receivers and your tight ends. And running backs that can beat guys one-on-one. -on -one. If I have one complaint about Ryan Matt, and I probably have about five. But if I could only choose one, it would be that when he gets a guy one-on-one -on -one 
cornerback, a safety, a linebacker. He never beats him. Ever. And so, the runs that should be really awesome, highlight reel, 50, 60, 70-yard runs end up being 12-yard gains. In the games that, that he's played well, and don't forget, this last season was terrible, but don't forget the year before that, in the first half of the season, he was so good that I was saying if the Chargers make the playoffs, he's a legitimate MVP candidate. So he he's played at that level. <clears throat> he can be there. And even then, he wasn't beating guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. He was just so good and was so consistently getting those 8, 9, 10, 12-yard runs whenever the offensive line actually played okay. Remember, they still had Dealman and McNeil. I guess that was before McNeil got hurt. So when they still had Dealman, before Dealman got hurt, before McNeil got hurt, when they still had those two guys in Hardwick on the left side, the left side the Tomlinson always ran behind, Matthews was running at an MVP level and catching and just doing a whole bunch of things in 2011. And then McNeil got hurt, and then Dealman had a seizure, and then it was all downhill from there. So Ryan Matthews needs two things. He needs his offensive line to get better, at least back to where they were, in 2011, and he needs to somehow, and I I should be sitting here saying he needs to find a way to not fumble. It's true. He needs to find a way to not fumble. That's not his biggest problem. He needs to find a way to beat guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. He needs a move. Just one move, a spin move, a juke, a, some, a just put his head down and plow people over, something. He needs some move so that when he breaks free, that one time per game, he's getting 60 yards and a score. Chargers were something like 1-5, and 1-6 and six in one-score games last year. Just imagine if last year, every time he broke free for a 10-, 12-yard run, it was instead a 60-yard touchdown. That leads to a much better record in those one-score games, changes the whole complexity of the rest of the offense, the defense, everything. If I'm... The running backs coach, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to teach him ways to carry the ball where it's less dangerous, where he's less likely to fumble. But my number one concern with Ryan Matthews is not the injuries, not the fumbles. It's turning those 12-yard runs into 60-yard runs. Because you know when Tomlinson stopped being great? It was when those 60-yard runs turned into 10-yard runs. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. He had just enough speed to and, and just enough moves to have a 50, 60 yard run at, at least every other game, if not every game when he was younger. And then all of a sudden he was getting tripped up. He was tripping himself up. He couldn't beat people anymore. And those 60 yard runs became 10 yard runs. Ryan Matthews needs to go the opposite way. He needs to learn how to make the big play. If he can do that, I'm good. But what I was mad about with Football Outsiders, to bring it full circle, was they were talking about the running game, blame the offensive line, and blame the running back. And then they didn't mention Danny Woodhead at all. They were like, oh, well, you know, Ryan Matthews can't do it, and neither can Ronnie Brown, so they're pretty much screwed. Like, what the hell? Danny Woodhead was the fifth best running back in the league last year. Like, that's catching and running to completely disregard everything he did as a, a runner is ridiculous. He had a great year running the ball. Yes, he was running it out of a spread offense, we're going to be running a spread offense. It's perfect. That article should have been simple. Ryan Matthews has all his potential, struggled behind an offensive line, needs to limit the fumbles, needs to stay healthy, needs to learn how to make the big play. Oh, and Danny Woodhead is there. Yeah! Now they can run out of a spread offense and get real production out of their running game. Yeah! No, none of that. Just blamed people and then made fun of Ronnie Brown. Bullshit and lazy. All right, let's see how many comments happen while I was in the middle of that rant. Okay, that's fine. 
Neither Teo no, nor Mouton is an ideal option. Based on what we know, Teo is probably the better player. I still think it's based on what we've been told. Not what we know, what we've been told. Which is still... I don't believe people when they tell me things. Mouton was never considered a difference maker. In college he was. I think Manti Teo finished second in Heisman voting. <laughs> yes. If we go in 16 and get clowny, it'll be oh happy day. You mean when Spikes was out, Bromford was getting snaps and not Mouton. That doesn't say anything about Mouton's skill level, but I see your point. Yeah, you can't trade up for Clowney because no one's going to trade down, unless you get the Herschel Walker thing where you literally trade your entire team to someone just to get Clowney. May not be a bad option for the Chargers if they don't make the playoffs this year. <coughs> Norv said that Ryan Matthews has poor vision. True. I don't necessarily believe that. Um, based on everything I've seen, Ryan Matthews has good vision. He's just still running like a rookie, which means he sees where he's supposed to go, um, but his legs are acting more on instinct than in response to his brain, if that makes any sense. Um, you see it a lot with rookies, and then the next year where their legs would have taken them that way, they've now slowed down the process. They say the game slows down for them enough where they feel like they don't have to react. They don't have to act on instinct alone. They can wait for their brain to send the thought down to their legs and then go that way. So I just think the game hasn't slowed down for him yet. Ooh, Darren McFadden as a comparison to Ryan Matthews is not bad, except that McFadden is probably a little bit better. <clears throat> Barry Sanders wasn't exactly good behind the bad offensive lines he had. He was just above average, which was amazing considering. I mean, I guess he was good. He did get to, like, the most yards ever, the fastest ever, but... <clears throat> that wasn't really running. That was more like whatever the hell Fran Tarkenton was doing, just without throwing the ball. I don't care if Woodhead's not a primary back. Like, if you're going to bring up Ronnie Brown, you can't not bring up Danny Woodhead. <laughs> Mikey wants us to pause so we can put clothes in the dryer. <clears throat> yeah, the Saints traded a whole draft for Ricky Williams. No, the uh, the Vikings, I think it was, traded like their whole team. It wasn't a whole draft. It was like their whole team for Herschel Walker. I don't know. I wasn't really watching football then, so maybe I'm not getting the story right. True. Vision is subjective anyway. Can't really measure a running back on it. And in reality, <clears throat> unless you're dealing with a cutback scheme, vision doesn't really matter because you just follow wherever the hell the line tells you to go. Or if you, like, you, most of the time you have a lead blocker, whether or not that's a fullback or your guard or your center, you have a lead blocker. You follow the lead blocker until you see daylight and then you run towards daylight. Yeah, McFadden has way more natural ability. I agree. I also, I have an issue with Matthews that everyone harps on me for, 
But it's similar to the issue I had with Sean Merriman when he came back from his injury, which is... And it's it's actually the same. I heard... Uh, I think it was Chris and Ben the other day talking about Clayton Richard on the Padres. And they were... I don't know. Maybe it was Judson and, and Steve Adler. They were talking about uh, Clayton Richard, and they were saying that Clayton was a little too buff. And if you compared him to other pitchers, you know, most of them aren't that buff. They're kind of stringy. And when you look at running backs, I mean, there's like Michael Pittman, who is the first guy that comes to mind when I think of Ryan Matthews' body type. But the rest of the guys, the rest of the running backs you see, are lean guys with muscle. You know, Adrian Peterson is a lean guy with muscle. Michael Turner is a, a big kind of tubby guy with muscle. But, like, Ryan Matthews is not a lean guy, and he's not a tubby guy. He's a big guy with big muscles, and he looks like a bodybuilder. And I just I feel like you lose so much flexibility by being that bulky. I, I wish someone could convince him to lose some of his bulk to get more flexibility, to be, you know, uh, maybe a little bit quicker, whatever. But when I look at professional athletes, the people I see that can stay healthy, play long, and, and be effective are almost never the guys that look like bodybuilders. Can you name for me a professional athlete that looks like a bodybuilder that's, that's amazing? I don't think I can. I know a lot of lean guys that have muscle. I know a lot of stringy guys. Not necessarily running backs. You know, David Boston, was he a good wide receiver because he was covered in muscles? Why is it absurd to talk about him being too strong? Okay, when I said it before, I said that maybe it, it caused some of his health issues. Maybe he, he was getting injured because he was too bulky and not flexible enough. Fine. I'm an idiot on that point. I take that back. But I just when you look at other successful running backs, Maurice Jones Drew, like anybody, Ladanian Tomlinson, they're skinny, lean guys with muscle. So why, if you're looking at all your idols and they're playing the same position as you and they're all lean guys with muscle, why would you try and look like a bodybuilder? Why, what makes you think you can break the mold and be the first great running back to look like a freaking bodybuilder? I, I don't get it. Like, I, if I were him, I, I, I would go about it differently. Adrian Peterson is not huge. Now you have me on the Google for Adrian Peterson shirtless. Like, I understand he has muscles, but he doesn't look like a freaking bodybuilder. He looks like an athletic guy. Ryan Matthews doesn't really look like an athletic guy. Okay, there's Reggie Bush, kind of lean. There's LeBron James, kind of lean, kind of big. All right, these pictures of Adrian Peterson make him look kind of big, but he still looks lean. Gee, I didn't ask for shirtless pictures of Tim Tebow. Why am I getting those? Oh, here we go. Body issue. A whole bunch of naked pictures of him. And they make him look gigantic, but that's that's part of the deal with them. Just saying, like, even even in a uniform, like Ryan Matthews looks like he's got mus muscles bulging out of his uniform, and Adrian Peterson doesn't. He looks like a strong guy that's kind of skinny. Here, I'm giving you, I'm sending you a link. I'm glad that that just puts random text in there. I I don't see how Adrian Peterson looks bigger than Matthew Matthews. Maybe my eyes deceive me. I do need glasses, but to me, Matthews looks like muscle on muscle. 
MJD, Adrian Peterson, they look like small, small athletic guys. Maybe not small. They look like athletic guys. Yes, I think Danny Woodhead gets 100 carries this year. I didn't say Adrian Peterson wasn't strong. That's not what I mean. He's very strong. I think, like the Clayton Richard thing, I wish they would have gone into it more because I think the difference between a buff guy and, and sort of like um, a more athletic looking guy is the difference between longer muscles and shorter muscles. And I'm, I've, I've read something on this before, I know I have, um, where, you know, longer muscles are better for repetitive athletic things, where the shorter muscles are better for short bursts and pumping iron and all that. Bo Jackson was a freak of nature. I'm, I'm not getting into Bo. Not to mention, Bo, Bo got hit on a pretty normal football play, and his hip disintegrated. So he's not exactly the person who I would follow if I was a running back. Yes! Yes! Ryan Matthews said he stopped bulking up at the request of the new trainer, trying to be more lean and flexible. Yes! Thank you, Mikey. Yes. In your face, everyone who spoke up against me. And look, the, the last trainer Jeff heard, everyone loved him, but I now love the new trainer. I don't even remember what the hell his name is, but I am a fan because that is exactly what I would do if I was a trainer. Oh, Brian Dawkins was pretty buff. I will give you that. But yeah, that's that's a strong safety. Strong safeties can be pretty buff. You know, it's it's a lot different for. I mean, you don't really see buff cornerbacks. You don't see really buff wide receivers outside out of David Boston. Vincent Jackson was pretty muscular, but you really see the the running backs to me is you know they're they're not. They don't look like they can't put their arms down by their side. Ryan Matthews looks like he can't put his arms down by his side because his muscles would just put his arms out. I said, I, I didn't say being muscular was the reason for Matthews getting hurt. I said that in the past. I took it back. I said I'm wrong, okay? I'm wrong. What I'm saying is I think he could be a better running back. Okay, let me restate. When I look at running backs that are successful, they don't look like bodybuilders. Therefore, if I was a running back, I would not look like a bodybuilder. Okay? That's it. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Nothing else about injuries, about performance, about anything. If I was a running back, and specifically one that wasn't being very successful, I would look at everything that the successful running backs were doing, and I would copy it. And if I looked at my body and I was rippling muscles, which obviously it is, and the other running backs weren't like that, I'd be like, hmm, maybe I need to get leaner. I don't think... Adrian Peterson is bigger than Ryan Matthews. I don't think you can convince me of that. No, I don't think my fiance gets mad if I check out men. I don't get mad if she checks out women. Matthews doesn't look like a bodybuilder. He looks like a power lifter. Fine. Same thing. I know. Bodybuilders are the guys that look ridiculous. He doesn't look ridiculous. He just doesn't look like a running back to me. And look, Peter King, I, I met Peter King, Ryan Matthews' first year. And Peter was at Chargers practice, and I was standing next to him. And he looked at me. The players came out, and they started practicing. And he looked at me, and he was like, and, and he looked at Ryan Matthews, and he looked at me, and he goes, look at the muscles on that kid. I've never seen a rookie look like that before. And he was saying it as like a compliment, like, he's going to be so good because rookies usually don't come in that muscular. And at the time, I was like, I was like okay, but Ryan's gotten more muscular every year, it seems like. Maybe it's in my head. I don't know.
Okay, what am I looking for? I'm looking for... Oh, Ryan Matthews without a shirt on. See, these are pictures of him when he's like a rookie, though. He's not as big then. He's gigantic now. Although, I mean, he was gigantic last year. Maybe he's not so much this year. Yes, Clay Matthews is, is very large. But if you're going to play on defense, you kind of need to be. Unless you're... I mean, pass rushers can either be really huge or really long. Clay Matthews isn't really long. I don't think high school football is the same as the NFL. I'm sorry. I'm not really looking at images right now. I'm kind of doing this thing right now, but I'm just telling you from watching a lot of football that, like, try and find... Do this for me. Try and find a picture of Adrian Peterson. No, try and find a picture of Ryan Matthews in just a t-shirt last year. Because I, I remember specifically there was a thing where Adrian Peterson was being interviewed while he was walking down the street. Um, I think they asked him about gay marriage or something. And he was just wearing a t-shirt. And I was like, wow, he's lean as hell. And it was like the middle of the season. And then after that, I started noticing he's got muscles, but he's real lean. And I think that's, I think that's how he manages to be fast, quick, and strong. It's you know, it's muscles, but it's not slowing him down at all. I don't know. When you look at track stars, track stars aren't really covered in muscles. You know, they're they have long muscles, thin muscles. That's what running backs should kind of have. <laughs> I know what leaner means. Lean means less fat, more muscle. I know. But it doesn't mean big, bulky muscles. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to find a picture of Ryan Matthews' muscles now. Because this is what we're spending our time with, apparently. Why I'm spending my time doing this, I don't really know. Maybe because I love looking at football players shirtless. Oh, there's a picture of Clay Matthews. He is pretty big. You know what would be a good way to do this? Compare Ryan Matthews' forearms with the forearms of Adrian Peterson. So Ryan Matthews' forearms are gigantic. I know that. And Adrian Peterson's are not. Bolt is buff as shit. Oh, you mean the guy who dressed up like the lightning bolt? He is. He's got a lot of muscles. Holy crap, there's 30 people in here watching me Google players shirtless. Way to spend a Tuesday. Track stars don't get tackled. Yeah, because they're so fast. Okay, Gordy's done with this subject. Let's move on.
Okay, so A.E. Simpleton, your argument is that powerlifters and bodybuilders should be running backs in the NFL? Let's talk about something else. What did I say I was going to talk about? I had like subjects, real subjects. Let's see. We got about 15 minutes before I go spend the rest of my night playing video games or something. So this is usually the time when I open it up to any and all questions. Let me see. Oh, I got rid of that damn post, didn't I? Son of a bitch. Yeah, I, I get that that's a picture of Ryan Matthews. I also get that I can barely see any of him that's not covered in shirt. Um, you just tried to upload a picture from your computer. That doesn't really work. You have to sort of link from somewhere on the internet. Now I get to decide after this if I actually want to eat the rest of the hat cake or not. There's Adrian Peterson in a t-shirt. See how he sort of looks skinny and not... Like, he looks like he can put his arms down if he wants to. And I never really feel that way about Ryan Matthews. Like, Adrian Peterson doesn't look all that bigger than Percy Harvin there. Gates' future and his heir apparent. I don't think there is an heir apparent for him on this team. I think they're going to have to sign someone. I think John Phillips is going to be a stopgap in a year or two uh, while they either sign someone or use a high draft pick on a tight end. Okay, I said I would talk about potential starters in each position. We didn't do that. What to watch for when you attend training camp. We'll do that next week, right before training camp starts. Are there any free agents left to sign? I don't think so. Is there any cap space left? I doubt it. Are the 2013 Chargers better at the start of training camp than the 2012 Chargers at the start of training camp? That's a good question. I would like to know. We'll do that at the end of this. That for my last 10 minutes, let's talk about are the Chargers better now on July 16, 2013 than they were on July 16th 2012. You guys let me know. BFTB meetup. Yeah, we're we're doing a staff meetup this weekend. We're going to do a bigger meetup with all the commenters and readers and everything um, for one of the preseason games. And then we'll probably do one for a road game during the season, too. Didn't put words in your mouth. Asked you a simple question. Oh, it's a picture of Matthews with his arms at his sides. Got it. Fair enough. He doesn't look that bulky there. Could be I've just had this weird image of Ryan Matthews all this time of him bulked up when he's not actually, but I don't know how you could look at that picture of Adrian Peterson in a t-shirt and say that he's bigger than Ryan Matthews. I don't know if they are better. The only honest response. I want Gates to retire a charger. I think he will. Um just because I don't think he wants to... He doesn't strike me as a dude that wants to hang on forever for the money. I think he's pretty happy with the money he has. Um, I think he's going to play for a couple more years until he feels like he can't start anymore, and then I think he'll probably have offers from other teams, but I think he'll retire anyway, but I don't think we're that far away from it. Uh, at this point last year, Gaither had been signed to a long, expensive contract and was expected to be our starting left tackle. Um, 
Yeah, the first day of training camp is when he injured himself and then never really recovered. So right at this point last year, we were all excited that Gaither could be what he was the year before. You might to what? The staff meeting? You'll get the invite to the meetup when we do one for the preseason. That's still like a month away. Better offense coaching staff. Um, I guess. I mean, it's hard to argue against Norv. He's had so much success. But you could could argue against the offensive line, but then you'd have to say that this year's offensive line is better. So I don't know. Complicated questions. <sighs> Hi, 30 people. What's up? Yeah, Gordy really hates Ryan Matthews. But that's cool. Like, I get that. You guys want to know why I love Gordy? Because Gordy is not afraid to be a fan. Like, he'll hang with us, and he'll do stats all day. But, like, I'm afraid to become a fan. I will fully admit, I'm afraid to become a fan. Like, I am a fan sometimes, but I'm afraid to show that. Because when I'm a fan, I am an idiot. I am a logical I hate people that don't perform well, and I love people for the dumbest reasons. And I look at that, and I'm like, I don't want anyone else to see that. That's one of the reasons I watch games by myself. Like, I don't want people to see how stupid I can become over this sport, because I want them to see this reasoned, statistical side that's like, I understand football. Because, you know, I'm sure I say things when I'm being a fan that go against every stat in the world. You know, I, I think I said at some point last year or the year before that Phillip Rivers was the worst quarterback in the world. Was he? No. Was I pissed at him? Yeah. And I love Gordy because he can do both. Does the stat thing, hangs with the stat people, and is never afraid to say, you know what? Fuck Ryan Matthews. I hate that guy. Because when I wanted him to be good, he was fumbling the ball and getting hurt. I can't say that. I, I sit there and I'm like, well, no, you don't understand. Like, he actually didn't fumble all that much. And if you look at his fumbles per carry, he's not that bad. Like, I'm a calculator, essentially. I'm a calculator that drinks. I guess Richard drinks, too. So me and Richard are calculators. Crane is, too. The three editors of the site are calculators. Gordy is not. That's why he will he's the one unbannable person. Can't have a staff invite, sorry. Not part of the staff. If you got invited, why would the, the staff wouldn't feel very special? Um, hi cat. I think a lot of you underestimate fresh starts. They are better. I think you are forgetting how many teams get fresh starts and continue being terrible. The Miami Dolphins for the last few years stand as an example of that. They've had several fresh starts. The Jacksonville Jaguars have a fresh start every other year. Always terrible. At this point, I think last year was better only because we had an elite left tackle. Whew, that hurts, but you're right. An accountant who drinks. We all win.
I love when I tell people that Gordy's unbannable and he just starts rubbing it in their faces. Okay, guys. Uh, this was fun. We'll cut it a few minutes short because I think we're running out of actual stuff to talk about. And I don't think we have... There's other stuff I could cover, but nothing that I can do in five minutes. So it's all going to have to wait until next week. We'll do... You know, training camp starts next Thursday? Next Thursday, I believe. Maybe Friday. Um, so I'll probably do one of these next Tuesday or Wednesday. Probably next Wednesday. And we will... I'll tell you guys all about training camp. What to do, what to watch for, where to sit, where to find me. We can hang out. And you can watch me sit at games and watch you know, random things that no one else is paying attention to off the ball and tweet about them. It's good times. Anyway, guys, have a good night, and I'll see you next week.